QTLS, of course, is a status, it's not a qualification, so you don't, you don't get a qualification for certificate QTLS, yes? I'm really confused about all of this and how yeah. to do this in care. So, if we've got teachers in our college that don't want to have say, for a community in that way, so that they've got techniques, do they have to then become QTLS? Yes, any, any FE teacher who is a tutor will have to at some point have a qualified teacher in learning and skills. At the moment, there is no set plan about what you must have in order to achieve that, because remember, QTS is a status, not a qualification. But if you have a cert ed, you'll be given it on day one, so to speak, because what we do about teachers that are already in employment, we can't all go back to university and, and, and train again. So those that are already in the world of teaching, um, there will be a, probably some sort of minimum set of qualifications that will be considered suitable for this status. But we don't know what they are yet. But I can tell you that cert -Ed is a pretty much a sure fire QTLS, you know, green button, whatever you want to call it, gateway in to all of this. For us, it's going to be much more interesting talking about how we maintain that, because as teachers, we have to maintain our QTLS on a yearly basis on an annual basis, um, and it's all being driven by this thing called the Institute for Learning. I don't know if you've heard of them. The Institute for Learning will be the registration body for teachers, and they will keep, it's a bit like a general nurses council, or a general medical council. Um, the Institute for Learning will be our QTLS council, and they're the people that will hold our registration. Right, QTLS requires annual maintenance. It will require each of us to do approximately 30 hours a year. Now that could be 60 hours over two years, so it could be 4 to 20, that sort of split. But basically, we need to prove that we have done uh, at least 30 hours of CPD, continuing professional development. The only other thing is that it isn't so much what we do, but we have to reflect on it. So, what we will think, yes, think about Donald Sean and, and double loop thinking and that sort of reflection. I suppose really what it's talking about. So, the, we're going to have to prove two things. We're going to have to show 30 hours and we're going to have to show reflection on that 30 hours work. So, for example, let's say that in any given year, um, I have gone away and I've done um, a, a master's or something in, in, in e-learning. Um, that alone is much more than 30 hours, and as long as I write a reflection on having done my master's, that will be me for the year with brass snobs on. Um, but if I've gone off and done four or five training days, which together come to 25 hours, as long as I can then reflect on all of that sort of thing, then I've got 25 hours done, and I can carry my five over to the next year. That will probably be all right. So it's incredibly personalized context, this. There is no sort of general rule. Each of us has to find their own sort of pathway through this. It is seen as something very personal to individual teachers. There's no one route for, for everyone to follow. This word registrar is in inverted commas because no one's yet worked out who's actually going to be the grand master or mistress that sort of keeps everyone's record and rubber stamps and says, yes, this is, this is of suitable quality on it. Can't work that one out yet. But chances are it will be licensed by the IFL to individual colleges because colleges will really need to prove to people like inspectors and so on that their staff are competent and qualified to practice as teachers. So the chances are your quality sections or the equipment in your colleges will keep a list of those hours and those reflective logs or at least access to them in order to show that it is being kept up and maintained and they will then make some sort of statement to the IFL who will then stamp stamps. I'm going to get to the e-learning bit in a minute. All right, I am going to do that. But the point is, you quite rightly say, this is so new, people actually need to see the big picture to see what on earth we're doing with e-learning down here now a little bit. So this is the big picture of where this is all going. So wait on that one, we don't know yet, likely to be your college. Activity can cover any aspect of teaching, and I want to talk to you about e-learning, of course, but it can be any activity. So during my 30 hours in a year, I could spend 15 hours perhaps on e-learning, but five hours could be on uh, assessment, uh, another 10 hours could be on working up a new course in a new style, uh, which I can then reflect on. I can choose any aspect of teaching for my uh, CPD. It doesn't have to be e-learning. Um, but in our case, it, it's likely to be e-learning then, I would have thought. So each of us then chooses our own particular pathway through all of this. This is what it isn't. Q 
QTLS and continuing professional development is not a qualification. So it isn't a standard as such that everyone has to reach. In fact, the, the framework when I get to it, you'll see, is actually just a series of statements. They're not standards at all. Um, and teachers at different levels can map themselves across to it. So there is a statement there that talks about um, assessment techniques and, and, and uh, devising assessment techniques. Well, a, a brand new teacher can devise assessment techniques and an experienced teacher can devise assessment techniques. They do them at different levels, but they can both be mapped because the map is a, it's a personal thing. Like the map is there to support you personally. It isn't a sort of a universal thing with some sort of progression route all the way through it. And so therefore it's not marked as such. When we presented this before, people have said, so this framework, let's get this right, it's not a qualification, how do I study for it? Well, you don't. All right, so, so who's going to mark it? Nobody will mark it, but someone will supervise you in completing it. Um, and how do I know that what I've written is of suitable quality compared with the person sitting next to me? Well, you can't because it's personal and it's individual. Um, so the chances are that each of you at some stage of this isn't even certain yet. Most of us in this room, because this is an e-learning class, okay, this is, in this room there is e-learning class, which means that you people are likely to use an e-portfolio for this process, because you understand that. Some people will still use a folder of paper, that's where they will record it, and they will present that to quality. Chances are you'll be using an e-portfolio. But it's your portfolio, not the colleges, not the IFLs, not the LSNs, right? it's yours. Okay. So now, now we get to the e-learning bit. We'll put some of these up here. Now e-learning e is, of course, one aspect of, of being a teacher. So e-learning, of course, is an area where we can, can, can concentrate on our personal uh, development. And uh, the LSN have been asked to produce a framework, and they've come up with this sort of 21 different areas in which teachers are active in the world of e-learning. So the idea is, is that whatever you choose to do in the world of e-learning, you can find somewhere where that personal development will hang, where it will sit, will go, and we'll move on to that in a moment. How do we pitch it? How do you know that you've got it about right? Well, that's why the framework's there, because it provides statements. So when you actually say, well, I want to work on a course on my VLE, you can go to the framework, and there's a bit that talks about courses on VLEs, and there's a series of statements there that describe what a good tutor might do if they were working on courses on a VLE. So you then take your idea for personal development, map it to the framework, and then try and follow what's written there as a suggested way in which you might like to improve or develop your skills. How should activities be described professionally? Again, that's what the framework does. It, because it has a form of words, you can take what you want to do and fit it to that form of words so that it, it gives it perhaps a little bit more um, coherence, really, uh, to, to what you're trying to do, uh, to add to this idea of a coherent package. So let's have a look at the framework. Uh, this is a really important one. I love the Foil Pr Practitioner Program. We, we did it at my college um, uh, for many years. I've got loads of people through it. It worked really well and uh, very sad to lose it in a way. I mean, it is still there, but it's really not used anymore. This framework is seen as a progression to that, or it builds on that in a sense. Because the framework is really, because it's a series of statements, it allows me, not perhaps as a personal practitioner, but as a teacher of e-learning, I can devise training, which I will then deliver in my college to groups of staff, and that training, of course, will be perfectly mapped to the framework, provides those teachers with X hours of personal development, which goes into their portfolio. So, the FERL Practitioner Program no longer used anymore, but I will replace it with FERL type training, and in theory, I could still use the FERL Practitioner Program, I would simply map the activities that the students do in the class to the new framework. This one I find a bit confusing, but it actually, the list is not complete. The framework has got holes in it. The idea is, is that tutors and colleges can say, well, in my college, it's really important that we learn this particular skill, so we're going to add it into, our into the framework just for our college. 
And this is something that, as a college, we want our people to concentrate on. So it could be that you use WebCT in your college, and therefore you would actually have an extra little module added into the framework all about developing the skills of a teacher using WebCT, something peculiar to the college that could be sort of put in as well.